Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. I'm an Adobe Community Professional and I'm an official Fuji X photographer and welcome to the channel. So we're here with episode two and we're going to talk about uh, importing into Lightroom Classic 10 in our Getting Started series. So let us just dive straight in. I have a card in ready to go, so I'm just going to push in the card and then we will get going with that. So the card is going to come in. And so when cards get put in, the import menu opens up automatically. All right. So it tells you how many uh, images are on the card. And if you look down here, it'll also tell you the size of images that are potentially going to import. So some of the stuff here is from a shoot I did uh, before Christmas while we were out of lockdown. Um, but then some of the stuff is stuff I've done on my walks. All right. So this is not going to kind of be an in order kind of thing. This is just going to be taking you to the important stuff of getting stuff into import. Um, because there can be a lot in it. The important thing that you need to know about import is that you are deciding where your files go, right? There's this thing that people think that Lightroom uh, somehow magically ingest the files and then are magically within the program. I mean, which does happen with programs like Apple's Photos, for example. But in the case of Lightroom, no, you, you are choosing a place on the disk for them to go. And we're going to show you where that is so that you understand where your files are. So the way it works basically is you have where stuff is coming from on the left, what stuff you're going to import and then where it's going to go and what you're going to do it on the right. OK, on the top, you have how you're going to deal with them. And then here you've got different variations of, of what you're bringing in in the form you're bringing them in. Down here, you've got views and then you can decide if you're checking all of them or unchecking all of them. You can sort them, you can view them at different size. So that's the basic layout of what is going on with the entirety of Lightroom so, or of Lightroom's import. Um, so the thing to remember, like I say, is where it comes from, what you're bringing in and what you're doing with them as they come in and where they're going. So in this case here, you've source and you can also choose here from different sources as well. And um, but generally speaking, when you plug a card in, it will automatically be picked up and that is turned on by default in preferences. Uh, we will deal with that when we talk about preferences at some stage. So normally this shows up as a device and it shows up in files. But by default, it gets selected by this DCIM folder and would include subfolders on. This is because it's a faster import to go through files than it is through devices. And in because devices is basically using whatever device mechanism is in your OS, all right, which can be slower. OK, so this comes in by default this way, which is better. So this is us deciding and there goes a the train going by. This is us deciding uh, what we're going to bring in. All right, where is this coming from? So here we have copy SDNG and copy, which are all that's available when you have uh, a card. Um, move uh, does exactly the same thing as copy, except it moves it off the device. Then add us, uh, basically add, add as location. If you wipe the card, then you've wiped the files and they're not actually in Lightroom. And so you've lost the files. So that is why you're not allowed to do that in this situation. We saw in the previous video that you can use add when stuff is coming from a drive and when you have when you have add uh, these options here are limited uh, there's very little you can do you can just do apply during import pretty much so all photos shows every folder on the card if a file is already inside the folder then it will be dimmed here so to say that it's already in there that's based on this option here don't import suspected duplicates so if this is on anything that it thinks is already inside your catalog will be grayed out and you can't import it basically if you turn this off, you will then be allowed to import them a second time. Um, that's basically it. It will get if it's the same name as something that's already in there, it will get renamed with a dash two at the end of it. All right. So what's important here is how you bring these in. All right. So if there were we talked about this uh, import suspected duplicates. So if there's suspected duplicates and they're grayed, when you click new photos, they will be hidden away. Now, the next thing is what I would normally use on, uh, when I've got multiple uh, sets of photos on the card I shot at different times is destination folders. Now, destination folders is tied, obviously, to destination. OK, destination is where your files are going to go on the drive. So if I click, I have a date format here, which I'll explain very briefly. So destination folders here, if I come to this disclosure triangle, it's telling me that it's going to go into this folder here. Now, just going to note that that's a folder. Then there's a dash. That's another folder and at 31 then. So these are all subfolders. So there were three different folders. There are a hierarchy of three different folders there. So I'm going to close these all down. 
just so we can see how many shoots are actually on this card. So we can see there's quite a few shoots on this card. Now we're not going to bring them all in in this case here. And uh, I've, I've up to date, I have put, let me rephrase that. I have changed Catalina on this drive. And the problem with that is that sometimes it's not letting me access all the drives because not all the permissions were set up for some reason I don't know. All right. So if we have an issue after, don't worry about it because you will still have seen the import process anyway. We talk about destination here because I think it's more important than the other stuff because these will just let you bring them in anyway. And if you said nothing on here, it won't make any difference to the import and um, it will make difference to your organization later. But um, for your import, it will be it, it'll still work. But the, the reason why destination is important is because you need to know where your files are and you need to have chosen an option that allows you to manage your files outside Lightroom if you decide not to use Lightroom in the future, because it can happen. When you choose this option here and um, by date, you can see here that you have a variety of different date options. So like I say, each of these slashes here indicates a subfolder. Uh, so this will be a 2021 parent folder and then inside it, each time you have a new date come in, it'll give you this date folder. Now this can make for a long list if you've got a lot of regular imports. Whereas this one here with the subfolders means that you could have a maximum of say 31 folders uh, being imported if you're shooting every day, for example, in a month. And that's why I prefer this one. Why do I prefer this one over these longer ones? Well, just because these ones are really long and a lot of numbers just becomes messy. And uh, with the January option is um, like it, it gets done in alphabetical order. So that means that January will be after uh, February, basically in, in the in the order, which is kind of annoying. It was like if it kept the order so that it wasn't just alphabetical and then you could have them in actual month order, I would probably use that one because it's just it's more pleasing to look at the, the name. Um, so, I mean, technically, I could just edit the months, you know, to have 01 on them afterwards. Um, but that's what I use. Um, but here's the thing, right? Do whatever you want to do. So these ones here would all be flat folders. But again, you could just end up with a long list of folders. And personally, I just prefer to have a hierarchy. I just think it's much neater. That's all. But it's entirely up to you. You do have another option, though, and that is you could do it um, by the original folder. So it will just take the folder and then it'll put it in to that folder inside whatever you selected here as the top folder. All right. OK, and um, so by uh, uh, into one folder means you're just selecting a folder and you're just going to put it, every single thing into a folder wh wherever you've selected here. All right. So this will just go into the root directory of Macintosh HD if I selected this one here. So let me just go back to my um, dated folder. OK, and then uh, we actually wanted to kind of go into, say, we actually wanted to go into a user folder and into pictures, say pictures. All right. So that's going to go inside my pictures then basically. Uh, I accidentally double click there. All right, so I'll go into inside pictures. So again, because we jumped out to our destination folders and changed it, these have become reselected. And yeah, sometimes it's really weird where it clicks and then it's, I don't know why it does that. All right, it is annoying. But how you can know what's going on, let me just make sure that's off, is the amount that's down here is matching here, 44 and 44, okay? So we're, I'm not going to go into detail on previews because this is already going to be a long enough video, but essentially Lightroom needs previews to show you things. All right, we'll come back to that again. Smart previews are a different type of preview that allow you to edit when your files are offline. And um, we've just, we've covered imported specific, don't import suspected duplicates. Make a second copy too, just allows you to back up to another drive or another location at the same time. So you have two copies of your images. Um, an add to collection allows you to create a collection and, and add to it. Now you can add to a collection that's already there. Um, I did start to do this video before, but I was having issues, so I'd already created this collection. So you can just click here to add a new one, or just we can just select this one here. This is useful if you've got sync turned on and you want to have stuff automatically go up into the cloud. Renaming files um, just allows you to rename files. There are some uh, default ones that are here, like custom name with the original file number and stuff like that. And I have a few different ones that I've already created here on top of that as well. And um, this one here, date, custom and uh, sequence, it's supposed to be number suffix. And um, yeah, there we go, it's showing it correctly there. And when I did this originally, it wasn't showing it correctly. And um, so I'm gonna call this frosty morning. And the dash gets treated like um, a space um, for Google if you're uploading. Um, so it's good for SEO. 
And that's why I'm doing that. I'm just going to paste that in there. And I'm just going to get rid of the morning nature. Okay. And by opening up that disclosure triangle, we can see what's in here. Uh, by double clicking, we can go into the loop view, which we can see the symbol has changed here. And that is currently included in import. You press U to turn that off, P to turn it on. So it's the same as the flagging inside the main program, which we'll cover at some stage. Or you can look back at previous videos on flagging. And if you go back to the grid option, uh, what we can do here is you can check and uncheck all. You can sort um, ascending or descending, and you can sort by a few different things. Uh, capture time, I would normally use file type if I was sorting out, say, JPEGs from uh, raw files on import, so I didn't, didn't bring in JPEGs if I shot that way. And then you can, of course, you can change the thumbnail size as well. Finally, um, you have import presets. And, it, well, not quite finally, there's one other thing to show. Import presets basically take every setting that you've done here, uh, remember it, that you can then just click on that and use it again. Uh, they are sticky, so you might get caught if you're using a particular type of import and then you wanted to use a different import with a different destination. So generally speaking, I don't use them. Uh, I actually don't know that many people who do use them as well. So just a feature that are there for some people who require it. Um, but generally speaking, it wouldn't be used. And the other thing is that if you only ever import without making separate selections, and once you set this up, once it's all remembered, um, you can go with this miniature version of it. Okay. Generally speaking, I like to be able to make selections because I might decide, uh, let's say I did a shoot in a studio and the lights didn't fire, I might intentionally remove the images that were black so that I don't have to look at them again, basically. Um, because they just, they just take up unnecessary space on disk. Right. So now that everything is ready to go there, I could potentially bring it in. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention actually here uh, during apply during import is you can have a develop setting come in each time. You may have a landscape preset that you like and you just want everything applied. And um, I'd be careful because it's, say, uh, it's sticky and let's say you brought in some portraits and had your landscape settings applied, they might be too saturated, for example. So generally, I don't use that. Um, and then I would have a metadata preset. So this is just something that applies information to your file. In this case, it's just my copyright information and my website address. Um, so, But that can be covered again and has already been covered in older videos as well. But we will be covering them later in this series again for the Lightroom 10 version. So now that these are ready to go, we know that the files that are coming from the card are going to get copied. It's only the files from this particular date that are going to get copied. Um, there, there's no duplicates coming in. They've got standard previews. They're going to get added to this Frosty Morning collection. They're going to have this name here, which looks like this sample here. Um, they're going to have my metadata applied, some keywords, and oh, that's actually that's actually a dot there. Let me fix that. Um, comma, and then they're going to go into my pictures uh, folder and they're going to be in a dated folder and only this 44 from these ones. These ones that are grayed out are ones that are on the card. That is where they would potentially go if they were um, selected, which they're not. And then we just click import and these files will then come in. And, and that is basically import. So as we are importing, what's happening is we'll see these files are coming in here and we've got this little progress bar here. So we click here and it's telling us no operations in progress, which is unusual because we are definitely importing. And we can even see that that it's there. So I don't know why it's telling us there's no, oh, there we go. Now it's just after coming up, All right? So we can see there's two things happening. The first thing is that it's going to copy and import photos and then it's building the standard previews. Okay. And then when we're done, they will all be in and these will go away and that'll, that'll let us know that everything's in. Right, we can see that the card was ejected and um, because we saw that was ticked on. And so what happened as well is that in catalog, we got this new collection here called previous import. Right, and it's building the standard previews at the moment. There's 44 files just come in and we can see in our frosty morning collection, we have uh, 44. Also, uh, what I'm going to do here is if I go, if I right click in this and just go to folder in library, it will now then jump to the folder. The reason for this is because when it's in previous import, you can't sort, for example, like that. So you're better off jumping to the folder itself. Right. And the other thing we're going to do here is I'm going to rename and I'm going to misspell this really badly. I'm typing over my microphone here with what's going on. So I click save and that will give us a searchable um, 
uh, folder name. And the reason why that's good is because you can search by folders. So at some stage in the future, if you have a larger catalog, you can just type in frost and then this folder will come up as one of the things that show. Or if you type in morning, uh, this will show as well. All right, so that's really, really handy to do that. It also means that outside Lightroom, that the folder has this name on the disk. Okay, so let's say I'm on this image here and I right click, I can go show and finder or you can do show and explorer as the case may be. And that would bring it up. Now it'll probably bring it up in my other window because uh, I'm running on a dual monitor setup and I bring it over here and that's where the file is on the disk. Now on Mac, you can hold down the command key and you can see the hierarchy here. And um, so that means that that is in a folder called Frosty Morning that can be searched outside Lightroom. So folks, that is just a general overview of import. Now there's obviously different sections to import itself like, like there, like file renaming uh, and previews and stuff like that that we will cover separately because this video would get very, very long if I was to go to everything that's in detail in it. We could easily spend a whole hour having all of that stuff in it together. And I know you don't want that. It, it'll just not be interesting. Okay, so simple as that. So folks, hopefully there's something new in there for you if you didn't know it and if you're just coming to it from, uh, like this is your first time with Lightroom. Just remember the important thing is that by selecting destination, you know where your folders are. You are in control of that and that is the most important thing. So folks, I'm supposed to tell you to like the video during it, but you know, give the video a like please and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when the next episode comes online. Thank you for watching this.